Oi, odd job. Yells out another drunken knob. Some slob sunken slouched with a pint in hand, supposedly making a stand for land he claims as his. This, I know, is racist, but ever the optimist, I optimist it. Sadly, ignorance ignored turns to angered arrogance, and he asks me, can't you speak no English, mate? Now, my ability to avoid him began to grow thin, and straight up vanished along with that straight dram of whiskey I'd just finished, because not only can I speak it, I can read and write it. I've even had to analyse it whilst working towards a degree in English language and linguistics where I learned the intricacies of syntax, the complexities of lexicon, the schematics of schemata and the developmental stages and the different phases of the English language and its usage. The conception of this nation and its speech has its foundations entrenched deep in invasion. The roads for Roman were paved by the Romans, who also gave places their names. When they were done and gone, in came the Anglo-Saxons, bringing with them ash and thorn. Along with daughters and sons, who grew up, had kids of their own, and to them these letters were unknown. Through these two civilizations, there were scatterings of Scandinavians, in time creating settlements and began sharing sentiments with the pre-existing residents. The ones who came to raid, made families, shared histories, and laid down the structures for grammar, which were further refined by the Normans, who brought over enormous reserves of words unheard of before, and generations afterward, afterwards normalized them even more. Now, once the dust had settled and this land stable, it turned its attention outwards, earned itself some water wings, and switched up the vocabulary. See, invasion got turned into exploration and expansion, explained into e colonization. It began adding various countries to an ever-expanding collection within whom still lives on its legacy, like the history books of India. Incomplete without mention of the East India Trading Company and the impact of its occupation. The natives were considered uncivilized, yet resources were ravaged and looted, and even that word was loaned by visitors. Entire generations were left in a state of depression after the requirements of standardization weren't met. And even to this day, a white man is called Sahab, a noun translating to sir, boss, or employer. And this leaves me with a loss for words, because even after independence and the writing up of a constitution, colonialism is still stuck deep within this new nation, entangling and whitewashing the core of its cultural identity. I have witnessed people bleach the color out of their skin because they have been taught that fairness guarantees success. They are caught in an illusion of progress, a problem found within my homeland as well, where year after year I hear tales of boys training rigorously to attain a rank in a military regiment that doesn't even belong to their country's government. With promises of a better life, boys are strapped with a knife soaked in a heritage of one time holy and sacred, now it's coated through in a sacrificial red. And when the blade becomes sheathed, duty completed, they return home as men with a fraction of the spoils of war until recent events change legislation allowing safe passage to this land once again. This is what has led me to live the life I've led. If I traveled and well versed in the cultures of this world, and I'll hope you'll forgive it if I go anaphoric for a minute, Back to that slur you held in my direction, see, the only time the phrase odd job has ever been applicable to my life is when you look at the odd jobs my parents worked when they arrived here in search for a better future. Sadly, this civilized nation still has much further to go. Then why don't you go back, he yells out. Now you claim to know that the problem lies with immigration, yet show no disregard about the amount of appropriation abundantly surrounding this multi-ethnic interface society that we live in. Now I'm not standing here asking for any kind of reparation, rather learn from your past and show some appreciation. Instead of talks of assimilation, why don't we try our hand at cross-cultural pollination? And together, watch the blossom of crops over this small piece of dirt upon this big and wide shared earth. It will be an odd job. I know that life is already hard enough, but if we don't give up, I know we can get there together, and it will get better. So, what do you say to that, mate? Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank you, Lance. That was amazing, man.